a 750 megawatt river of electricity, enough to power 750,000 homes, is about to be forced through a set of cables buried under one of the world's roughest stretches of water. This is Marinus Link, a 345 kilometer long energy and data superhighway that almost no one will ever see. It's an invisible lifeline being laid at the bottom of Bass Strait. But how do you bury a power grid under a raging sea? The story of Marinus Link begins with a problem facing an entire nation. Australia's electricity grid, for the better part of a century, has been powered by huge, centralised coal-fired power plants. But these giants are getting old, and one by one they are being retired. In their place, we're building vast fields of solar panels and wind turbines. But there's a catch. The sun doesn't always shine, and the wind doesn't always blow. To keep the lights on, the country needs a giant battery, and that's where the island state of Tasmania comes in. With its deep lakes and massive hydropower dams, Tasmania has the potential to become the battery of the nation. It can store energy by holding water back, ready to be released to generate electricity exactly when the mainland needs it most. But there was a bottleneck. The single electrical cable connecting Tasmania to the mainland called BassLink, is aging and is simply not big enough to carry the amount of power needed. A bigger pipe was required. This idea was first seriously explored in a 2017 government study, which laid the groundwork for one of Australia's most ambitious and challenging infrastructure projects. With the clock ticking on the nation's old power plants, engineers were handed an unprecedented challenge. Their solution would have to conquer the sea, tunnel through the earth, and harness one of the most powerful forms of electricity. So what exactly is this invisible energy artery they designed? Marinus Link, in its first stage, is a 750 megawatt connection. But it doesn't use the same kind of electricity that comes out of your wall socket. Our homes run on alternating current, or AC power. Think of AC power like a winding country road. It's fine for short trips around your town, but it's not very efficient for long journeys. Over great distances, you lose a lot of energy. Marinus Link uses High Voltage Direct Current, or HVDC. HVDC is like a dead straight, multi-lane superhighway for electricity. It can send massive amounts of power over hundreds of kilometers with very little energy loss, which is exactly what you need to cross the 345 kilometer gap between Tasmania and Victoria. But Marinus Link isn't just carrying power. Bundled with the high-voltage lines are fiber-optic cables. This second hidden benefit will create a data superhighway, increasing the internet capacity between Tasmania and the mainland by an incredible 150 times. So engineers had the technology, but how do you actually build it? The journey begins on the seafloor. For 255 kilometers, the cables must cross the infamous Bass Strait, a stretch of ocean known for its powerful currents and waves, with an average water depth of around 50 to 80 meters. The process is a masterpiece of marine engineering. First, a specially designed cable laying vessel, a huge ship that can carry thousands of tons of cable, slowly and carefully lowers the thick armored line onto the seabed. But just leaving it there would be incredibly dangerous. A ship's anchor or a fishing trawler could easily snag it and cut power to hundreds of thousands of people. The cable has to be buried. Following behind the first ship is a second vessel that deploys a remote-controlled underwater machine called a jet trencher. This underwater robot looks like a giant sled. It lowers itself over the cable that's now resting on the sea floor. Then it uses powerful pumps to blast the seabed with high-pressure jets of water. This turns the sand and silt into a soupy liquid, a process called fluidization. The heavy cable then simply sinks under its own weight into the temporary trench which naturally fills back in with sediment. The target is to bury the cable about 1 to 1.5 meters deep, safely out of harm's way. But what happens when the seabed isn't soft sand? In areas where the bottom is hard rock, a different approach is needed. Here, the cable is laid on the surface, and then large flexible concrete mats, called mattresses, are carefully lowered from a ship to cover and protect it, like a suit of armor for the sea floor. After conquering 255 kilometers of ocean, the cable reaches the Victorian coastline at a place called Waratah Bay. But its journey is far from over. 
Now it has to travel another 90 kilometers inland, completely underground, to reach the main power grid in the Latrobe Valley. For most of this distance, the construction method is called open trenching. A wide corridor, up to 36 meters across, is cleared to give machinery room to work. A trench about 1.5 meters deep is dug. A special bedding material is laid down and the cables are placed inside. Then all the soil is put back and the land is restored so that farming and other activities can continue right over the top. But you can't just dig a giant trench across major highways, railways, rivers and sensitive coastal dunes. For these obstacles, engineers turn to a remarkable technique called horizontal directional drilling or HDD. Think of it like keyhole surgery for the earth. At the coast, a drill rig is set up on farmland, far back from the fragile sand dunes. Instead of digging down, it drills at an angle, boring a tunnel deep beneath the surface. This tunnel passes invisibly under the dunes, under the beach, and emerges on the seafloor over a kilometre out to sea, at a water depth of about 10 metres. Once the tunnel is complete, the massive power cables are simply pulled through the pre-drilled conduit. The surface is left completely untouched. This same HDD technique is used to cross 82 different waterways and other critical infrastructure along the 90-kilometer route. And since the cables can't be made in one continuous 90-kilometer length, they are connected in sections in huge underground concrete pits called joint bays. Each one is about 12 meters long and buried deep enough that you'd never know it was there. This entire system of undersea and underground cables is an incredible feat but it's useless without the two most important buildings in the entire project, the converter stations. At each end of the line, one in Haybridge, Tasmania, and one in Hazelwood, Victoria, sits a massive industrial facility that acts as the brains of the operation. These are not simple substations. The Hazelwood site in Victoria will cover 31 hectares, and the buildings at the Haybridge site in Tasmania will be enormous, measuring approximately 280 meters by 220 meters. Their job is to be the system's giant translators. They take the efficient long-distance HVDC power from the cable and convert it into the HVAC power that the state grids use. They essentially change the language of the electricity, allowing power to flow smoothly from the superhighway onto the local roads of the grid and vice versa. Now, whenever you talk about moving this much power, an important question always comes up. Is it safe? Many people worry about the invisible force known as electromagnetic fields, or EMF. These fields are a natural part of our world, but high levels can be a concern. The engineers of Marinus Link designed the system specifically to solve this problem. The secret lies in the design. By bundling the positive and negative HVDC power cables together and burying them deep underground and under the sea, the magnetic fields they create largely cancel each other out. Independent assessments have confirmed that the EMF levels at the surface will be far below the strict international safety guidelines that Australia follows. The studies show the project is not expected to harm people, livestock or farm equipment. In fact, the impact is expected to be similar to the existing Basslink cable, which has operated for years with no identified negative effects on marine life. The only specific recommendation from the studies was that any beehives located within five meters of the land cable should be moved just to be safe. Building a project this ambitious is more than just a battle against nature. It's a high stakes gamble with a colossal price tag and a decade long timeline. So who is paying the bill, who stands to win and who might lose in this invisible energy revolution? The final investment decision for stage one was made in late 2025 with a price tag of around $3.8 billion. This represents a significant increase from early estimates, a result of rising costs for materials and labor worldwide. The project is a complex partnership jointly owned by Australia's federal government and the state governments of Victoria and Tasmania. Construction is scheduled to begin in 2026 with power expected to be flowing by late 2030. The official case for the project promises huge wins. It's expected to create thousands of jobs, around 1,400 per year in Tasmania and 1,000 in Victoria during the busiest construction period, and inject billions of dollars into the local economies. 
Proponents say it will ultimately lower wholesale electricity prices for everyone by unlocking Tasmania's cheap renewable hydro and wind power, making the entire grid more secure. But there is another side to this story. Critics raise serious concerns, especially for the people of Tasmania. They argue that connecting their state's low-cost energy market to Victoria's higher-priced market will inevitably cause Tasmanian power bills to go up, not down. They point to an analysis suggesting the claimed benefit for consumers isn't a price cut, but actually a smaller price increase in the future than if Marinus wasn't built. Others question the fairness of the deal, which sees Tasmanian customers paying for nearly 28% of the project's ongoing costs, a figure they say is too high for the state's small population. And perhaps the biggest question of all comes from those who ask, is there a better way? Some energy experts argue that it would be cheaper, faster and more efficient to simply build massive new battery storage projects on the mainland in Victoria, instead of spending billions on a cable to access Tasmania's hydro battery. It's a debate that pits a grand nation-building vision against the real-world costs for everyday people. Marinus Link is more than just a cable. It is a monumental and controversial feat of engineering a project at the very heart of Australia's difficult and expensive transition to a renewable energy future. It is a multi-billion dollar bet that will reshape the energy landscape for the next 40 years, a hidden superhighway that demonstrates the incredible challenges we face in building the power systems of tomorrow. If you were amazed by the scale and complexity of the Marinus Link, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next deep dive into the world's most incredible engineering projects. Let us know in the comments what mega build you want us to explore next.